시청자 여러분 안녕하세요. 임플란트 보철 치료에 당 Greetings ladies and gentlemen. This is Prosthodontics on Friday live which addresses different prosthodontic steps involved in implanted treatment as well as the side effects. Today, Dr. Cho Yongjin is going to talk about minor tooth movement in order to provide a better implanted prosthesis. Greetings. Thank you for coming all the way to Prosthodontics on Friday. Can you briefly explain about your lecture? Today, under the title, Minor Tooth Movement to Provide a Better Implanted Prosthesis. If the defect size is not significant in partial edential patients, I want to talk about minor tooth movement to secure space to provide prosthesis that is in balance with adjacent teeth and the antagonist. I want to focus on cases. It sounds very fascinating. I think there are a lot of dentists who would be interested in this topic. I look forward to your lecture. Those of you watching the program from the dental, you can participate in real time via the chat. Leave your questions and these will be addressed and the lucky draw Starbucks coffee coupon will be sent. In August, we're celebrating the second anniversary of Prosthodontics on Friday. We're going to select three people and provide a Maserati LED tumbler. This is quite a luxurious tumbler. The temperature is shown on the lid. Get meaningful information on implanted prosthesis and get presents from Prosthodontics on Friday. These gifts can only be given to those who agree to marketing on that on site. I look forward to your interest and participation and let us begin Dr. Cho Young Jin's lecture. Today, I'm going to talk about minor tooth movement to provide a better implanted prosthesis. This is contents of the day. First, a site preparation. This will be addressed briefly. I'm going to talk about implanted prosthesis form in normal dentition. If there is a horizontal tilting or if there's a horizontal space issue, what kind of tooth movement is required. Next, I'm going to talk about vertical space control and then summarize. First, I'm going to talk about site preparation. The case that you see on the screen, multiple implants were placed to restore a dental patient. This is an extensive case, actually. It's like building a new construction. There's no adjacent to teeth nor antagonist. You don't need to concern about teeth alignment. In partial edential patient, minor tooth movement and site preparation may be necessary, as you can see in the image. The bone bed is favorable, bone quantity and quality is good, and Horizontal and vertical space is fine. In this case, in providing implanted treatment, it can be quite simple and fast and stable. However, there are not that many cases where all the conditions are satisfied. At times, there can be tilting or the space can be limited. The distal tooth can be mesially tilted. There can be cases where the implant is necessary in the lower, but there's a tooth extruded in the upper, and the same can be said for the other way around. There can be space both left and right, and there's a space next to where the implant is going to go in. These situations can be seen very frequently. Let's look at a case. In the lower, if the posterior tooth is missing, there is a mesial tilting. This is something we see very frequently. 
The patient received this prosthesis about three, four years ago. In the lower right, there is three-unit fixed partial denture, and in the lower left, there was a lot of mesial tilting, so the dentist was concerned of prepping the natural tooth too much. One premolar abutment, and in the posterior area, rest of seat was provided. The two-unit cantilever bridge was provided. Only three or four years have passed. Secondary carious and apical abscess can be observed. These problems occur due to unfavorable prosthesis. The patient needed to extract tooth and receive implant. Number five was extracted and fixed the partial denture. I cut up to the pontic and plan to place two implants here. If the molar in the posterior area is tilted, the space where the implant needs to go in, we know what the ideal horizontal position is, 1.5 to 2 mm away from the adjacent tooth. If I were to place a 4 mm implant, the implant needs to be positioned about 3.5 mm away. If I try to get 3.5 mm on both sides, inevitably the implants will be overlapped like this. This is not possible. So I tried to distance the implant as much as possible, but because there was significant tilting on the mesial and distal tooth in the apex side, there is significant space, but where the screw hole is, there is very tight space. It was very complicated. I tried to distance the implant, but when I made a prosthesis, the two implant impression coping, they're almost in contact with each other. Impression coping were prepped to secure space to provide implant prosthesis. The prosthetic phase was quite cumbersome and tedious. This is after treatment, and this was in 2010. Treatment was provided in a similar fashion for both sides. A lot of tooth prep occurred. Treatment was completed, but between number 7 and the implant, there was significant embrasure space. And there is danger of periodontal issues. The patient needs to continue to maintain it. If you do not upright the tooth and provide implanted prosthesis because of the tilted tooth, periodontal care may be difficult and the contour of the prosthesis will not be optimal because of the tight space, especially in the case of molar and premolar. Interimplanted distance may also be an issue. The implant angle may not be ideal. When restoring the distal natural tooth, excessive prep is inevitable. You cannot just leave this tilted tooth as is. You need to upright it and prep the tooth and make barrier contact in order to make a path of insertion of prosthesis the distal side of the mesial tooth and mesial side of distal tooth is prepped. This is the only way to provide prosthesis. Fortunately for this patient, the patient continued to come in for recall every six months for almost 12, 13 years. The prosthesis chipped after 10 years and this was provided again about Three months ago, in 2022, although it was external type implant, you can see that surrounding bone condition is very good and periodontally it's being maintained favorably. Not all patients can maintain the conditions like this. Number 8 was extracted and number 7 on both sides it was tilted. Rather than going ahead with implant placement, if I had done minor tooth movement, I believe the implanted position and the direction and inter-implanted distance would have been more favorable because the teeth would have been uprighted and implants would have been placed in the premolar and first molar area. Better implanted prosthesis contour would have been provided to the patient.
구조인물의 형태를 우리가 어, 만들 수가 있었을 거다라고 세, 생각을 할 수가 있는 거죠. 그렇게 되면 이제 자연체도 periodontal care would become more easier, not just for the natural tooth, but for the implant as well, and the contour of implanted prosthesis would become more ideal. Interimplanted distance would be more ideal, and excessive prep of natural tooth could have been avoided. There are many advantages. I've talked about site preparation. However, this is quite frequently used in the surgery field. In other words, GBR is done in areas where there's not that many bone and you make a environment where it is ideal to place the implant. If you look at the fixed prosthesis textbook, it says mouth preparation. This is before a series of prosthodontic phase, after treatment planning, you need to do various uh, surgical, preservatory, and periodontal treatment. This is called mouth preparation. Ideally, site preparation is done after treatment planning before implant placement. However, up until prosthesis delivery, you can slightly move teeth and do natural tooth alteration. Therefore, you can do site preparation even in the middle of clinical process. You can have a little bit of flexibility here. Site preparation for implant placement. Within the definition of mouth preparation in the textbook, it includes oral surgical preparation, carious and existing restoration, definitive periodontal treatment, orthodontic treatment, and selective teeth reshaping. Today, I'm going to focus on the lower three, definitive periodontal treatment, orthodontic treatment, and selective teeth reshaping. I'm going to focus especially on orthodontic tooth movement. The purpose of site preparation is to establish a state of health and supporting and contiguous tissues, to eliminate interferences of obstructions to the placement function of prosthesis, to establish an acceptable occlusal scheme and plane, and to alter natural teeth form to accommodate requirements of form and function of prosthesis. In other words, in a less than favorable condition, if there are interference, rotation, and tilting. You can address these issues to make a more favorable environment for implant placement and provide prosthesis. This may not be ideal, but more optimum prosthesis can be provided. This is a preparation step to provide this. In a normal situation, the key in implant prosthesis is distance, distance, and distance. Due to COVID, we talk a lot about social distancing, and this is also true for implant as well. The inter-implant distance is very implant, and implant to natural tooth distance, they are very important. Mesiodistally, as shown on the image, there needs to be at least 1.5 millimeter apart from the natural tooth, and the distance between implant needs to be at least 3 millimeter. Buccolingually, the direction is very important. The implant axis needs to be towards the occlusal table, and there needs to be at least 1 millimeter of surrounding bone. Vertically, there is image of anterior area uh, from the CEJ, there needs to be at least 3 to 4 millimeter. These days, placing implants deeper is recommended, so 4 millimeters. Mesiodistal, buccolingual, and vertical distance needs to be secured. In summary, three-dimensional position of the implant is very important in determining the appropriateness of the implant prosthesis. In order to provide a good implant prosthesis, surgery needs to be done very well. If you have appropriate distance three-dimensionally, we need to consider various parameters. 
for proper occlusal harmony such as occlusal curves, height of marginal bridge, shape of embrasure, and shape of occlusal table. Also, sufficient masticatory function needs to be provided and to do this, the size of occlusal table, cusp height, and angle, absence of occlusal interferences, these conditions need to be met. Periodontally, we need to provide a healthy condition, so we need to look at emergence profile, implant to implant distance, the subgingival contour, soft tissue thickness, and periodontal status. If we meet these conditions, the ultimate goal can be within our reach now. Let's look at a case. This is 55-year-old female patient. In the upper left, the pontic prosthesis was damaged. Number 25 needed to be extracted. Two implants were to be placed. If you look at the mesial and distal tooth, they are all restorations. The vertical space and the adjacent surface, the surrounding structure was ideal for placing ideal implant prosthesis in number 25 and 26. Even if it weren't, controlling or polishing could be done. Vertical and horizontally, there was no space problem. After waiting for extraction socket to heal, implant surgery was done. The distance to the adjacent tooth was about 1.5 to 2 millimeter. From the CEG of adjacent tooth, the appropriate distance was marked and implants were placed. GBR was done. This is after surgery. Through clinical process, prosthesis were fabricated. Through surgery, three-dimensional position was ideally secured. You can see the screw hole of the prosthesis is in the center of a occlusal table and the form is similar to natural dentition. If you get good position three-dimensionally, meeting the parameters to form a good prosthesis is not difficult. Distance is essential. If the surrounding structure is normal, setting various parameters, it is over 90% determined by the three-dimensional position. Today, what I want to talk about is not the ideal conditions, but I want to talk about abnormal conditions. Let's look at horizontal issues first. We come across these cases very frequently. Even if a tooth is missing, if it has been left untouched for a long time, we frequently see cases where there is not enough space for implant placement. The space is just not enough for a ideal prosthesis to go in. There would be interference with adjacent teeth. Also, you can notice a space that has been caused by drift in tooth. Before placing implant, by using simple appliance, you can secure space for implant placement and close off unnecessary space. July 10th, 2018, we started treatment after two weeks, and within a month, you can see that adequate space has been secured. With this much space, implant can be placed and appropriate size prosthesis for molar can be provided. You can see that the unnecessary space has been closed off. I use localized coal spring system. There is open coal spring, inner sleeve, and outer sleeve. This is a simple appliance. I use this for these cases. I'm going to show you a similar case. This is panoramic image. You can see that multiple teeth needs to be extracted and implants need to be placed in the missing areas. This was the treatment plan. Implants were placed in the prosthodontic stage. In this area, although implant was placed, the space was a bit tight to provide appropriate prosthesis and there was unnecessary space mesially. I wanted to expand this space and close off the unnecessary gap. I used the cold spring system. The mesial tooth was premolar and distal tooth was molar. If there is no periodontal issue, cold spring system can be used. Both teeth will move, however, there is higher possibility of tooth with single root moving than tooth with multiple root. 
Therefore, the molar is barely moving. You can see a lot of movement in the premolar area. Appliance is used. The tooth is slightly rotated, so I want to rotate the tooth in this direction. Force is to be applied more lingually. In order to do intrusion, mini screw was used. Minor tooth movement, as shown, was attempted. Cold spring system, if you put it like this, the spring is going to stretch and is going to push the mesial tooth. I positioned it slightly lingually so that rotation can be achieved. Depending on where the force is applied, counterclockwise or clockwise rotation can be achieved slightly. Minor tooth movement of moving one or two teeth, this is determined by vector. How much force is applied to which direction determines a tooth movement. If you look at the progress, this is May 2018. This is after two weeks. You can see that the space in front is closed. Intrusion did not occur significantly. I did not expect it to be so. Mini screw was used, so slight intrusion can be observed. During the progress, implant prosthesis was provided for the upper first. Upper prosthesis with ideal plane was provided. I'm not going to do wire splinting to retain the tooth that was moved with minor tooth movement. The implant is going to serve as the retainer. If you move one or two teeth, unless it is a really unique case, I don't use a separate appliance. This is upper and lower. Implant treatment was provided as shown. There was slight extrusion and rotation and spacing. Minor tooth movement was used along with the implant treatment to achieve arch integrity. Fairly ideal occlusal surface was provided via the prosthesis. Can I ask you a question? Sure. In the lower second molar, if you upright the tooth, will there be interference with the antagonist? How do you solve it? Yes, there's interference. In the case of this patient, it was not a molar uprighting case. Between number 7 and 5, if you put the appliance, uh, the mesial tooth is going to move mesially and distal tooth is going to move distally. Therefore, there can be interference with the antagonist. If the antagonist is going to be prosthesis or if the tooth that is going to be moved underwent endodontic treatment, you can remove the occlusal surface first and get occlusal clearance. If you provide the appliance thereafter, you can get the tooth movement swiftly without interference. You cannot really remove significant amount of occlusal surface if it is a vital tooth. You need to check occlusal contact whenever the patient comes. There's always interference. You need to continuously do occlusal adjustment and have the target tooth move. I believe when you talk with the patient, you need to have the patient understand that the endodontic treatment may be required when upriding tilted tooth. Yes, depending on the amount of upriding, it may differ, but if you're moving tooth slightly, occlusal adjustment can solve the problem, but if it is tilted by more than 30 degrees, when you upright the tooth, it is not bodily movement, therefore the amount of prep on the occlusal table is increased and there's higher possibility of endo treatment. Therefore, you need to inform the patient ahead. Thank you for the wonderful answer. Let's look at the chat screen. There's a lot of questions here. Watching live program. I've come to catch the live prosthodontics on Friday. I look forward to Dr. Joe's lecture. Malicious? I looked at the link on the website. I think this person is a newcomer. Bebe, I look forward to the program. This is my first time. Let's look at some questions. Dr. Jeongjin, I hope you appear more frequently. Uh, 
Let's scroll down. Jerry 213K went up riding tooth in the posterior area due to tooth mobility after prosthesis. I'm concerned about food impaction. How long do you maintain wire? I think this is something I've mentioned earlier. When you upright the posterior tooth, temporarily there can be mobility, but it does not increase to pathological state after uprighting. If necessary, you can proceed with prosthetic treatment. And uh, mesial to that, the implant prosthesis is connected. Relapse after ortho treatment, it means that it's trying to go back to its original state, but mesially, there's going to be an implant prosthesis and uprighting the posterior tooth, it's going mesial side. Therefore, contact loosening does not occur. Theoretically, you can say that contact tightening may occur, but I've never experienced a patient complaining about that. Food impaction. There can be food retention and gingival embrasure space, but I've never experienced a case where food impaction occurs due to open contact. You do not need to use wire. When I operate number seven and place an implant in number six, I do not use any retention appliances. Blues. When I upright posterior tooth, if I use provisional to do it, it's not quite easy. I add resin to the provisional and make space, but it's quite difficult. Is there any special tip in the timing or the period? This person is not using orthodontic appliances, but is adding resin to the implanted provisional on the distal side to make it tight. And once it becomes loose, the dentist would add resin more on the distal side. This process is repeated to upright the tooth. It's quite cumbersome. In my case, I place implanted in number six. After about two weeks before osseo integration, I make a provisional, and within that, I use easy spacer, which is a cold spring. I use implant as an anchor to push number seven. Then it becomes much easier. If you put appliance between number five and seven, number five will move the other way as well. The implant can serve as a accurate anchor so you can use it as an anchor to push number seven you can forego such tedious efforts you can make the occlusion low so it's not a problem if you cannot use those appliances rather than just adding more resin continuously there is a blue separation ring used for orthodontic purposes that we can use after adding resin once after a week there's a little bit of space you can add more resin then, and then the next time you can use separation ring. By doing this, you can reduce the number of adding resin. That's a good tip. Thank you. Dr. Jo Young Jin, your lecture is always well thought out. Thank you. ID cooling. When you upright posterior teeth, how long do you do occlusal adjustment and how frequent do you do endodontic treatment? I think this question is quite overlapping with the, your question. In the case of occlusal adjustment, I always check even though I may not do occlusal adjustment every single time. If the tooth moves very well, I have the patient come in once a week. In general, I check once every two weeks. If the patient is expressing pain or complaints of premature contact, I always tell the patient to come in at any time. In general, I check once a week in the case of endodontic treatment. If the amount of uprighting goes beyond 30 degrees, this can lead to a lot of extrusion. This is tipping movement, therefore, if it is beyond 30 degrees, you would need to assume that endodontic treatment is necessary before proceeding with prosthodontic treatment. The frequency of endodontic treatment can be determined by the angle. ID AHA. How long does it take? It may vary significantly depending on the type. Before, you said that it took a month for a certain patient. Uh, there's a slide that explains about this later words. I'll explain it then.
Lee 74 NEN. What kind of anchor do you prefer when doing minor tooth movement? I prefer implant. In the place, using the place to implant, if you can move the tooth, implant is a very secure anchor, so I prefer it. I did not go through professional orthodontic program. I just taught myself. Placing mini screw is quite cumbersome, and if possible, I like to use implant as an anchor to form implanted prosthesis. Suwon Dental Clinic, Dr. Jo, you're really good looking. I look forward to your lecture. ID Yeonjishi. The question is quite long. On the lecture slide, there was pocket mesial to number 47, and when you do eruption, if you extrude it using helical spring, mesial pocket depths can be reduced and this will lead to minimal impact on number 6 implant. Can we anticipate the same effect using mini screw? Or do you use other types of treatment like using minoclin or amdogain? Do you have your own method? When I'm writing molar, many different types of treatment can be used. I'm going to mention this in the later part of the lecture. There are relevant contents in Orthobarista on Dental TV. Helix Cold Spring, you can use different wires. There are many options available, but I want to focus on something that is simple today because these treatment options can be very tricky. I want to tell you the simplest way to do it as you place the implant. I don't have any professional knowledge either. Based on my experience, regardless of the appliance that you use, the effect of pocket reduction due to tooth movement may or may not exist. If there's a pocket periodontally, it will be unfavorable. I don't use a minoclin or endogain. When you use bracket, the crown is distally pulled and the root is mesially pulled. What I'm talking about is different from this. It is to reduce tilting. The effect can be not as good. There are many questions. Good dentist, how long does it take to upright the lower molar? Does it vary depending on male, female, middle-aged? Does it depend on age and gender? When uprighting the tooth, does it require intrusion? It's similar to the question before. In order to do uprighting and intrusion at the same time, you need to use bracket, cold spring, or arch wire. More professional orthodontic knowledge is required to do this. I'm not doing this. As for the period, I'm going to mention this later. We're going to entertain one more question from Lee74NEN. After moving tooth using orthodontic ways, after providing implanted prosthesis, is there a possibility of the treated tooth to move back to its position over a long period of time? Do you have such experience? In the discussion we had earlier, this was addressed. Minor tooth movement for implanted prosthesis. In most cases, space was created due to loss of tooth. In order to secure arch integrity, the space was closed off by placing implanted prosthesis. Therefore, the possibility of relapse is very low because you have arch integrity. Based on my experience, I've never seen space form once again after providing implanted prosthesis. Yes, because you're restoring it to its original position. There are so many more questions, but we'll entertain them after lecture because or else we'll spend the entire time entertaining questions. Among the questions received, can you pick the best question? 
We'll send a tumbler to one person. I'll choose ID Blues. At the very top, in the beginning, about adding on provisional congratulations, Blues. We will send a Maserati LED tumbler. You've been picked as the best question by Dr. Cho Young Jin. As for the rest of the viewers, don't feel let down just yet because we have a real-time chat event. If you have any questions related to the topic today, please raise them on the dental site. We still have two more tumblers. Don't feel let down. Raise your questions. Can you please carry on with your lecture? Yes. This kind of horizontal issue is something we come across very frequently. It's a very simple case. This is after placing implant, but in order to make a more normal looking premolar, you can see the spacing here on the mesial tooth. Treatment started in February 2nd, cold spring was connected after two weeks. You can see that the space is closed off on both sides, space is more secured. Prosthesis was provided like this. This was how treatment was completed. You can see mesial to number 4, the space is gone. As you wait for osseointegration, you can get this kind of result. If you look at the clinical image, you can see the occlusal contact here. Whenever the patient comes in, you need to check occlusion and check whether there's any interference. In the panoramic image, number 6 was missing, number 7 and 8 are tilted. This kind of situation is something we come across very frequently. You can either upright the posterior tooth and place the implant in number 6 or you can connect with number 5 and do fixed partial denture. Regardless of the type of prosthodontic treatment you choose, Uprighting the molar is very important in prognosis of the prosthesis. You need to pay more time and effort to, to get better result. There are many solutions to solve the mesially tilted molar. Personally, I'm not aware of complicated orthodontic procedures that require expert knowledge. So I want to explain about my way. If you look at this case, there's very limited space. We can try to place mini screw in number 8 and 7. You can put button in the buccal lingual area. Using elastic, you can pull it. Distally, you can pull it. Once the space is secured, this is number 6. Even if the mesiodistal width is insufficient, this is actually number 6, but I made it in the form of premolar. If you can secure this much space in completing prosthodontic treatment, overall there's no major problem. It took about 6 months from start to finish involving orthodontic and implant treatment. Next case, it's a similar case. Molar is mesially tilted, mini screw is placed, elastic was used to pull it. Once there was enough space to use cold spring system, from distal side the elastic pulls and from the mesial side the cold spring pushes to get the needed space more quickly. You can do it slightly faster. It took about three months. This is another case. Number 47 was mesially tilted and implant was placed in number 6. If you place implant, even if osseointegration did not fully occur, if healing occurs enough to take impression, it can serve as a very good anchor. You can add bracket to the implant crown and you can use tube nitai wire. You can use open coal spring. This is a very simple appliance. Number seven is pushed distally. The tooth needs to rotate counterclockwise. That's why the appliance is attached on the lingual side or else I would have attached it to the buccal side. 
Because of the need to rotate the tooth, I attached the appliance on the lingual side. This was how I completed the case. It took about two months for this case because they say anchor, you can move the tooth in a very quick time period. In this case, implant was placed first to serve as an anchor to push the tooth. In terms of implant position, it is better to secure space first and then place the implant in ideal position. But actually, implant was placed first, so therefore, implant body's position is not entirely ideal. Implant surgery is done when the space is tight. You need to understand those limitations. As mentioned in dental site, there is orthobarista program. I'm an avid viewer. There are many contents on minor tooth movement and molar tilting upriding. If you are interested in this area and want to get more expert insight, please refer to this contents. I've talked about the horizontal space issue and minor tooth movement, as well as space regaining. Implant prosthesis was delivered afterwards. Now I'm going to briefly talk about vertical issue. When we place implant and provide prosthesis, we often come across a vertical issues. The most frequent issue is due to missing lower, the upper tooth is extruded, or there can be excessive pneumatization of maxillary tuberosity, or there can be a hypertrophy of missing molar area, or in or there can be insufficient prosthodontic space due to generalized attrition. Congenitally, the patient can have extremely short teeth. Also, there can be deep bite from extrusion of lower anterior teeth. Orthodontically, we can correct the extrusion of upper molar. This is when an implant needs to be placed in the lower, as you can see in the images, upper number 7. With the missing lower, number 7 is extruded. In the past, I used multiple mini screws and used elastic to intrude the upper molar, but the bone quality in that area was not good, so mini screw failure occurred frequently. Intrusion did not occur satisfactorily. And I tried to think long and hard to solve this problem. I'm going to talk to you how I solve this problem. In this case, this is a 52-year-old female patient. Her thesis was provided like this. If you look at the difference between number 6 and 7, you can see that there has been minor tooth movement. Treatment started in December 2015 and ended in June 2016. It took 6 months. Implant was placed and as it was being osteointegrated, the upper was intruded. Number 7, space was secured and you can see that prosthesis was provided for the lower. This was when the patient first came, implant was placed in the lower and the palatal cusp of upper molar. The palatal cusp is almost in contact with the healing abutment. As it is intruded, the upper molar is rotated and there can be issues with palatal cusp. So appliances attached on the palatal side. For number 6, which is going to be used as an anchor, if possible, appliances should be attached more towards the gingiva and on the target tooth up to the point that it is not in occlusion, the appliance should be attached towards the occlusal surface. Nine tie wire is used and with time you can see that the upper is being intruded. In the upper, buccolingually appliance is attached, 012, 014, 016 is used. Up to the point that we secure the space, I use a bracket with bracket tube and night tie wire. I only add the appliance on two teeth. Intrusion is being done. If you do this, marginal ridge height becomes leveled and there will be no interference in terms of occlusion. 
force applied to natural tooth and implant can become more favorable. Also, there will be proper space for prosthodontic treatment. Various complications such as failure can occur less. When we cannot provide a lower implant prosthesis due to extruded upper molar, you need to choose whether you're going to choose the long-term strategy intruding tooth as shown or whether you're going to take the short-term strategy doing endodontic treatment on natural tooth and prepping it. So that marginal ridge height of prosthesis is leveled with adjacent to teeth. This would be the short-term strategy involving restorative treatment. The simple solution is to do endodontic treatment on the extruded tooth and to provide restoration so that space for implanted prosthesis can be provided. The worst option would be to leave the extruded upper molar and to provide short implanted prosthesis and without leveling the marginal ridge. That is the worst option. In the adjacent teeth, if there's fractured teeth or restoration, these need to be restored. As for the extruded antagonist, it needs to be resolved orthodontically or prosthodontically so that occlusal table has appropriate height. Let me share with you a recent case. This is a 44-year-old female patient, and as you can see, in the lower number 37 has been missing for a long while, and the upper number 27 has been extruded a little bit. Therefore, there was very limited space. The patient tried to receive treatment before, but due to significant limitation in mouth opening, the patient wasn't able to. She gave up implanted surgery. Because there was a significant shortage of space, I was unsure whether treatment could be possible with just minor tooth movement. The patient had difficulty opening mouth. I attempted intrusion first. After intrusion, if space was still lacking, I decided to do periodontal surgery and to do crown lengthening. I also thought of a prosthodontic treatment as well. So last year, December 31st, the appliance was attached as mentioned. For the tooth used as an anchor, the appliance should be attached towards the gingiva and for the target tooth, it should be attached more towards the occlusal table. This is February and March. In number 37, implant was placed, osteoplasty was done. In April, this is about three months later, and you can see that space for prosthesis has been secured in number 27. Intrusion occurred somewhat. As intrusion occurred, the pocket in the soft tissue deepened and clinical crown became very short because of patient's personal circumstance and due to her profession, she could not continue to receive treatment for long term. Orthodontic appliances were removed, crown lengthening was done, the clinical crown length was secured, prosthesis restoration was provided. Restorations for the upper, the natural tooth, and the lower, the implant, were designed together. The crown for the natural tooth in the upper and the crown restoration for the lower were connected. I tend to use external type implant when there is lack of space as shown. There is possibility of failure, therefore, at times I use different combinations. I take a fixed, I take implant level impression and when I do final bonding, I set the subgingival margin because the crown length is short. After doing a closal adjustment, I provide an ER type, but when doing cementation, I do cementation on plaster model and provide restoration like it is a screw type prosthesis. This is an initial visit and final prosthesis. Space for appropriate implant prosthesis has been secured. Osteoplasty was done in the lower, but this is not enough just by itself. You need to think of securing space in the lower before proceeding with surgery. In the antagonist, intrusion was done and crown lengthening was done. 
periodontal site preparation, endodontic treatment, and prosthesis restoration was provided together. Treatment was provided for both the upper and lower to provide such restorations. Due to time constraint, I was not able to prepare a lot of cases. I want to summarize if there's horizontal or vertical space issue by doing minor tooth movement we can provide better prosthesis i've shared with you such strategies doing this in providing implanted prosthesis leads to better outcome i've talked about simple cases when there is lack of space to provide implanted prosthesis and when there are multiple gaps and when it requires redistribution of space when there is necessity of uprighting due to the molar's mesial tilting. I've talked about the cold spring system and mini screw as well as elastics, tube and cold springs. For vertical problems, I talked about using tube bracket to intrude the extruded tooth. You need to consider whether you're going to take short-term or long-term strategy. If you want to take it short, you should not leave the extruded tooth as is you need to restore it prosthodontically along with the implant. I was not able to go into detail, but if there is severe lack of space, but in those cases, I prefer using external type implant and there can be various surface treatment. You need to provide geometric forms such as the groove and you need to cement it extra orally before delivering it to patient's oral cavity. In complicated cases, it may not be enough just to do minor tooth movement or to take surgical approach. Therefore, you need to do minor tooth movement. If there is limitation in time or amount, you can do crown lengthening to secure even more space and provide a prosthesis restoration. Such combination strategy needs to be utilized. There are more complicated cases. I'm going to share them if opportunity arises in the future. The reason why we do horizontal and vertical minor tooth movement is to get ideal implanted position. You need to at least get appropriate position. We need to understand what three-dimensionally ideal position is vertically, horizontally, and buccolingually. Because it is very important to place the implant in ideal position, you need to use surgical guide or simple guide. At the very minimum, you need to actively utilize parallel pin in the surgical process. That is my recommendation. By using these means, you need to achieve good anatomical form of implanted prosthesis. It needs to resemble natural tooth. Well aligned natural tooth is the best role model of implanted prosthesis. So we need to understand the anatomical traits of a well aligned natural tooth, and this is key in making good implanted prosthesis. In order to do this, we need to consider various site preparation. The most prominent approach is to do minor tooth movement of the target tooth. I believe we'd be able to get better prosthesis if we use minor tooth movement more actively to get appropriate teeth alignment, form, and space. I hope you factor this in as you provide treatment to your patients. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you. Dr. Joe, thank you so much for the wonderful lecture. A lot of questions have been received. Let's go back to question. Nas, when do you do implant placement after minor tooth movement? Do you move all adjacent teeth and after the teeth position is confirmed, do you place the implant and wait for osseointegration or do you wait up until the point the teeth movement is almost over? In other words, at 6 to 12 weeks before ending minor tooth movement and then do surgery so that minor tooth movement ends at the time point where implanted prosthesis is delivered. I would love to hear your opinion. 
By minor tooth movement, I think this person is asking about horizontal issue. If it is a vertical issue, as mentioned in the previous case, regardless of the target tooth, if there is sufficient space, you need to place implant first and wait for osseointegration as you do integration. If there's horizontal issue, I believe we need to wait until the position for ideal implant placement is secured. For instance, if I were to place 4 mm implant and if there's just a 2 and 3, 2 or 3 mm of space, the surgery itself is not possible. In this case, you need to do minor tooth movement and if the space of more than 4 mm is secured, you need to do surgery and then proceed with minor tooth movement. Put it simply, if you can secure space, for surgery, if space is sufficient for surgery from the beginning, you can do surgery first and then do minor tooth movement. But if this is not possible, you need to wait until space can be secured. Thank you for your answer. Little dentist, I really like your master course lecture. I look forward to your lectures. The admin has raised a question by ID Chu Chan, do you always need to do endodontic treatment and provide crown restoration for tooth that has got their molar uprighting? This was mentioned before. Dr. Cho has mentioned about 30 degrees yong yong. When uprighting mesially tilted tooth, I believe you need to remove interference with antagonist. How long should I wait? This was mentioned again. You need to check the, whether there is interference whenever the patient comes in. That would be ideal. Uh, Lee74NEN, if you upright the mesially tilted tooth and place the implant, towards the implant, the orthodontically moved tooth may apply continuous force on the implant. I'm afraid this will cause unfavorable impact to the implant. After tooth movement, the tendency to return to its original state is not bigger than the artificial force that is applied to the tooth. The potential of relapse is very minimum. Therefore, you don't need to worry about it at all. ID last kit. If you don't know about orthodontics and if you're a beginner when you attempt MTM, what kind of cases or precautions do I need to look out for? I've done many cases myself, but orthodontically, I'm really a beginner. The cases that I need to look out for, periodontally, if there's a problem, if you move the teeth orthodontically, the periodontal condition can worsen and there's higher possibility of failure. Therefore, you need to avoid teeth movement in patients with periodontal disease. Minor tooth movement using implant as an anchor, it rarely causes negative impact on natural teeth. Using natural tooth as an anchor to move another teeth, this can cause unwanted teeth movement. Lee 74 NEN. How do you manage the possibility of failure upon mastication when you use whole spring appliance? I think you're talking about easy spacer. The appliance can fall. However, the frequency, it's not as frequent as to the point that it bothers the clinician. One point you need to focus on is that if the space is tight and if the occlusal contact is made on the appliance, it can fall off. Because we use flowable resin to fixate it, if the occlusal contact is made on the appliance or the resin that is used to fixate it, then it's bound to fall off. You need to check whether the articulating paper comes off or whether the masticatory force is directly applied. You need to tell the patient to be careful with the eating certain foods. ID AHA when you intrude tooth, do you do it up to the point you get ideal occlusal plane or up to the point where the prosthesis can go in? It can differ depending on situation. If possible, 
If the marginal ridge is leveled with adjacent teeth, that'll be best. But if it takes too long, and if you have not reached a similar level as marginal ridge of that of adjacent teeth, you can change treatment plan in the middle and provide restoration. If the difference is minimum, you can do a closer adjustment. ID Sroli, when you upright the lower posterior and do intrusion at the same time, does it have many restrictions? More so than restrictions, it requires more orthodontic knowledge. The fundamental knowledge is required. I'm not really fully versed myself, so I cannot really say whether there are restrictions or not. What I want to tell you is that as a person without orthodontic knowledge, you do not retain the case after orthodontically moving teeth. In the end, we need to complete the case with prosthesis. Therefore, I have more flexibility. Even if the tooth does not go to the desired position precisely, I can provide restoration on the adjacent teeth. I can have more leg room here. If you can do intrusion at the same time, it'll be best, but it may require more complicated appliances. All is well. Even if minor tooth movement is required, it may be difficult to, to explain this to the patient and at times I proceed with endocrine. How can I persuade patients? <laughs> you need to build trust with the patient. At times it can be difficult to persuade patients, but if the target tooth is not restored and is healthy, actually it's quite Unfortunate if we have to prep it. If we tell these to the patient, the patient will respond positively. This is for the patient's own good. Yes. If you can provide a good explanation, it may take time, but the patient will be able to accept it. Lead Dent 52 Cold Spring Set is no longer available. I've heard that there were difficulties in supplying components, and I believe that similar products will be released soon. ID Awesome. In unilateral arch, when I do minor tooth movement, due to mobility of adjacent teeth, it's difficult to get contact and occlusion. How do you do it? Unilateral arch. I'm not quite sure what you're trying to say, but by unilateral arch. Perhaps if it is lower, if you just do minor tooth movement, perhaps there's mobility in adjacent teeth and it, therefore it may be difficult to get right occlusion and occlusal contact. If there's mobility in adjacent to teeth before doing minor tooth movement, then this is a contraindication for minor tooth movement. If the periodontal condition was fine, but due to the target tooth's movement, if there's mobility, then you may have applied excessive occlusal force. If there is occlusal interference and if you have not adjusted it, then this could lead to these problems. Applying right force on a periodontally healthy tooth and if you have done minor tooth movement, and if you have done occlusal adjustment well to prevent ephrematis, then the mobility of adjacent teeth will not continue long term. Wood, upper number seven is palatally tilted and lower number seven is lingually tilted. Can I solve this problem by just doing minor tooth movement and uprighting? Upper number 7 and lower number 7, tilted. I think this person is talking about a scissor bite. The upper is tilted this way and lower that way. There are that kind of occlusion circumstances. It requires high technique. You need to use bite plane and utilize tipping movement. In this case, Unless either upper or lower tooth is fractured and requires implant restoration, 
you may need to use mini screw at the palatal side on the antagonist when placing implant to upright the buccally tilted tooth but if the upper and lower are natural teeth you need to refer to orthodontist ID blues at times, I feel hesitant about connecting healing abutment on implants placed within a month. If I apply orthodontic force, will it lead to higher percentage of failure? I'm concerned. I disagree. If primary stability is below 10 Newton centimeter at the time of implant placement, in this case, you may feel hesitant about removing healing abutment, but if the ISQ value is over 70 to 75, if the primary stability is over 20 Newton centimeter after a month on top, providing a prosthesis that is not an occlusion is not a problem. ID NAS. Upon minor tooth movement due to unwanted tooth movement or premature contact or interference, the occlusion can become a major problem and may require overall orthodontic treatment. Is there a way how you respond to this kind of situation? If you use a natural tooth as anchor and target tooth, there are such possibilities. So in the beginning, I recommend you use the implant as anchor. Rather than moving single tooth, if you move multiple teeth and attach brackets of multiple teeth, then the orthodontic issues can surface more easily. My recommendation is for you to attach appliances on one or two teeth first. Dr. Jo Young Jin mentioned orthobaris, the upriding tilted molar link is being shared. ID Guda, if the upper molar is extruded, if we intrude it using minor tooth movement and secure implantive restoration space in the lower, when you intrude the upper molar, does it cause unfavorable impact periodontally? If so, this could be a bigger loss than what could be gained. I am not really sure of how it is written within textbooks or review studies, but if the tooth to be intruded already has deep pocket depths and has periodontal problems, I am unsure whether doing intrusion will help in reducing periodontal pocket size. If the tooth has healthy periodontal state, I believe it will not negatively affect the periodontal condition just because you do intrusion. ID Sroli, in the case of molar with bad periodontal condition, if you do intrusion, periodontal disease may worsen. What is the standard you use for doing intrusion? This is the same question. ID Hee Joe's question, what kind of wire do you use for intrusion? In the case of upper molar, I start off by using 012 nighttime wire and use up to 014 and 016. ID Good Dentist, in the case of upper, when you extract the wisdom tooth, number 27 is at times distalized. Can we use minor tooth movement to correct this issue? After setting number 26 with implant, number 27 can be distally shifted. How can I respond to it? Should I adjust the occlusion first? In most cases, molars are mesially tilted and we upright it. In the case of upper, at times the tooth axis is not towards the mesial side, but is distally tilted. In this case, the tooth axis is towards the distal area. Using number 6 as anchor, and you can use a button and use elastic to pull it, but because the tooth axis is distally tilted, there's high possibility of recurrence. How long do you think it takes to intrude the tooth? To intrude 2 to 3 millimeter, will it take about 3 months? It's going to take longer. 
depending on bone quality, age, and gender, it may differ. But based on my experience, after two to three months, the tooth starts to move, especially so in the case of patients with hard bone. Once the tooth moves, it continues to move swiftly, but up to the point it starts to move, it takes quite some time. It is better to tell the patient it takes about six months. There are so many questions today. It took us a lot of time. The last comment, Dr. Cho Youngjin, you really are an eloquent speaker. I'm sure you were exhausted answering all the questions. I would like to express my gratitude to everyone who have participated in the chat. Dr. Cho Youngjin is going to choose two best questions out of all the questions received. I'm going to choose ID NAS and ID Good Dentist. ID NAS and Good Dentist, congratulations, you're the lucky winners. If your question has been chosen as the best question, you'll be contacted separately. Please check the address to receive the gifts, and once this is done, parcel delivery will be sent. Please pick up Daniel's phone number, starting with a 070. Don't feel too let down for not being selected as the best question. We will continue to have lucky draw and send Starbucks coffee coupons among those who have raised questions. Stay tuned for more chat events. I look forward to your keen interest. A lot of time has elapsed, but could you give a word of advice to your peers who are studying really hard today? Minor tooth movement is not my specialty, but I've talked about doing minor tooth movement to provide good implant restorations to our patients. I focused on cases. A lot of my peers talk about this. I have no orthodontic knowledge, but because of need, I started off with one or two cases. When there's will, there's a way. As I build on my success, I've come to see what this calls for. I hope you try minor tooth movement in your daily practice as well. Start off with easier cases. You'll be more satisfied with the result and so will the patients. We have this prejudice that orthodontic treatment takes a long period of time, but as Dr. Jose mentioned, in the case of minor tooth movement, this breaks free from such stereotype and this is something that we can try. Dear viewers of Prosthetics on Friday, how did you like today's lecture with Dr. Jo Youngjin? We were able to get meaningful tips in providing good prosthesis by using minor tooth movement. As for the questions on answer today, these will be addressed via reply. In the next lecture, Professor Park Ji-man of Seoul National University Dental Graduate School will talk under the title Taking Impression for Digital Restorations. Thank you for watching.